if we're not even in that frequency, the topic of safety or unsafety doesn't exist, the contraction doesn't exist, and therefore the need to go to that realm of needing a protector doesn't exist. So it all exists within its own frequency domain. It's self-generative. Hey, Ben. Hey. So I have a question and request for clarity, I would say, um, around the topic of unsafety. Unsafety, uh, okay. Un unsafety. And more precisely is that I, at some point you gave this uh, assignment or exercise to kind of investigate if unsafety actually is a thing, if it exists and uh, just figure out directly for, for ourselves uh, what we would find. And at this point, I, it was very, very uh, revealing and potent for me. Uh, in terms of, I realized that it's a nexus of like a myriad of uh, beliefs that I'm holding. Like my entire psyche is based on this uh, nexus point of, of assumption of unsafety. And it relates to your interaction with uh, Gina, actually, as when you said that when we set the high standard for something, the, the deeper the roots are, uh, that are being re revealed. Yeah. So, nice. and, at this, and at this point of like coming close to realization uh, that unsafety is, a, like, it is not a thing, like the, the hell broke through, actually, or how, I don't know what the saying. <laughs> Hell broke loose. All hell bro broke loose. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for like a couple months, uh, yeah, like it was a confusion of the highest order. I, I don't remember what exactly was happening, but I didn't know what's happening. Like, yeah, like where to look, uh, where is the truth, and all this stuff. Uh, and I recently I came back to this um, exercise and just on safety investigation. And I realized that I'm, I'm in a different state, I'm in a different place, uh, and I'm feeling the readiness and willingness to, to once and for all uh, uh, shift my, uh, yeah, shift my worldview, my perception of that. Um, and I thought it might be actually beneficial for you to reprompt this exercise and also just to uh, for myself to re-emphasize the vibrational coordinates of of like what you were talking about in the assignment if that makes sense wonderful yes well it's such a great topic because um it's the main agree it's it's the main point of agreement between ourselves as the host and the gremlin as the employer like if, if there is no uncertainty or if there's no unsafety, then there is no requirement for any protector, right? And all the gremlin or the ego is, is a protector, self-preservation strategist. So we, we literally went out at some point in our childhood, probably for most of us and almost all of us. And we kind of just randomly hired the closest hitman we could find the closest protector we could find, Sicario. So <laughs> the Sicario, the hitman of, uh, of anything dangerous to us, anything threatening to us, because we didn't know any better. We just had this childlike outlook and things seemed kind of scary and we seemed kind of weak and you know vulnerable. So it makes sense. At some point, we developed a need for safety. And because of that need, we attracted a way of thinking, a, a thought form, that we call the ego or the gremlin or the negative ego and the gremlin. So if we can clear our consciousness from the perspective that we could either be safe or unsafe, more specifically that we could be unsafe, if we are able to clear that from our minds, if you will, from our perception, then there is literally nothing for a gremlin, external or internal, to stick to. So we become unswayed. So it's a very powerful query. And it's one that I continuously 
advise you guys to investigate from time to time, like to not forget about this exercise. Because you will find every time that you're in contraction or conflict with yourself, the core motivation for that agreement with the contractor, with the c- conflictor, with the gremlin is always the point of agreement that you have, the vulnerability to it is always a perspective that you could be lacking safety or well being or existence. And that's different shades of intensity. At the core of it, it's safety in terms of survival, right? My existence. Uh, there could be a lack of existence. But within that, there's other layers that are maybe a little bit lighter, but they can still be intense, such as well-being or social acceptance or inclusion in the community or friends. or So there's all these shades of it, but the core of it is unsafety or you could say fear of death. So when we really scope out the nature of creation internally and we realize that there is no death, that there is no lack, and that what we are is never unsafe, now what's there to agree with? terms of a strategy to preserve or protect from unsafety. So again, that's my general outline of this vibrational coordinate. If you have a more specific angle after this, let me know. Maybe how to do it more. Like an approach to realizing that there cannot be unsafety. Um. For myself, I'm pretty clear on that. Uh, right. I feel like it's beneficial. Well, what would you, uh, how would you go about it maybe for the others, just to give an example? Uh, I would just start anywhere, <laughs> you know, anywhere right. in my right. life. Because <laughs> any, almost anything could be unsafe, right? So you can yeah. start anywhere. Yeah. And just with the desire to get to, into, to the root, and it's always there. Like this familiar frequency of what I now call unsafety is like always there. And right. It's, it's just intimidating, like so much. Uh, yeah. But also, like, I could just shift there. Right. Like, right. But it doesn't feel complete when I'm doing it. I, I can experience the space, like, more easier of, uh, of that. And it also, exper- uh, also have a sense of what needs to be sacrificed, uh, which is wonderful. Everything. Yes. And uh, stay there. So yeah, Here's, I'm just at the point of uh, yeah, of really wanting this. Um, wonderful. So what come a few things come up for me as you're sharing this, which is beautiful. Um, one thing is the irony is the funny part is that the whole realm of unsafety exists only in the frequency of that belief. So it's not even that we are using the beliefs and the strategists to compensate for unsafety because it's a real thing. It's because we go to that frequency that it now causes the contraction and the panic and the fear, and it produces its own need for its own domain of frequencies. Does that make sense? It does. In in other words, if we are not in the, if we're not already in that whole domain where safety is an issue, a perceived issue, And there's a gremlin to protect us from it, from unsafety. If we're not even in that frequency, the topic of safety or unsafety doesn't exist. The contraction doesn't exist. And therefore, the need to go to that realm of needing a protector doesn't exist. So it all exists within its own frequency domain. It's self-generative. So it's only once we go to the perspective of I could be unsafe that we actually have the feeling of that being a real thing. Now unsafety is something that seems real. And then we need a protector and that all exists in the same sort of frequency bubble. So that's good to realize that you don't essentially even have to see that you're safe, although that is a good way. But if you can realize that it's not a topic unless you've already gone there, unless you already are there, it creates mm-hmm. its own topic of safety. It's not a topic outside of that. So that can be helpful to realize also. It's very cool. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and then the other thing that your share sparked, let me get back to that. Oh yeah, 
when you mentioned sacrifice, for instance, yeah, I know I see what I need to sacrifice, what beliefs and so forth. One way to just sort of have a complete shift out of that domain is to give up all of our desires. And I'm, go I'm going to nuance this a little bit because it seems to contradict with some of my other suggestions. So I'm going to bring some understanding into this. It's not so much about giving up desires, but the thing is, as long as we do still have perspectives of unsafety, the more things that we want to be a certain way, the more complex this maze of unsafety becomes and the more there seems to be a need for the gremlin to protect us through all that. Whereas you've all had moments where you didn't care about anything anymore in a good sense, not a pessimistic sense, but just like you've had glimpses of, I don't even want what I think I want. Like, I don't need what I think I need. Like, you know, it's like an experience of, sort of just God or just surrender or like a moment of liberation, a little Satori moment. In that moment, it feels like you've just given up any need for your desires to come true or for anything to be a certain way or for any outcome to happen and be controlled. So when you quote unquote, it's not really what's happening, but when you quote unquote, give up what you want, what you think you want, the outcomes. Now this pattern has nothing to land on. So one sort of shortcut, if you will, is to consider all your desires for a moment and just kind of say internally, like, I, I don't need that. I don't need what I think I need. And, and to have that brave, courageous Satori experience conjured up more frequently of my only desire is to have faith in God and all things shall be added onto me. I don't have to worry about that. That's also a great way to exit the bubble of unsafety and the maze that it produces. So the fewer our desires, the less active our gremlin needs to be because there's no need for employing it. And if we just create those moments of no desire, or you could say where the only desire is for the one, the seeker seeks the one, and we feel at home with just that surrender, you will find in that moment that for that moment, at least, you're free of the frequency of unsafety. It's not a topic. And we feel this as liberation or fearlessness or bliss or peace or love and so forth, or all of these combined. And it just feels so great. It feels so aligning. Then we can fall into the conclusion or interpretation, oh, desires are bad. I should be without desires. And that can work, but it's not really what's happening because what you want at a soul level is relevant and it has its in motion and it's already exists non-physically and it wants to come into your experience so like Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and then all else shall be added on to you. It's just like that. But if you can have faith in that, then you don't have to worry about the outcome of things. And when you're not concerned with the outcome of things, there cannot be unsafety because you're not trying to get anywhere. And then you don't need to employ the gremlin. And so you spend more and more time outside of the frequency domain of this perspective of unsafety. And, and you become familiar with what it feels like to not even indulge in it to begin with. And that's really what's going to anchor in that conviction shift to where it becomes natural. I feel, I feel I'd say very close to entirely fearless, but I don't feel like that's necessarily something I do. I feel that that is a natural consequence of not indulging in fears, <laughs> of not giving any priority when a doubt comes up or a lack belief or a challenging situation. I don't say I, I never have a reaction anymore because I do, but is there's stickiness to it is so diminished and it's so quickly to see through because of prior practice of this. Once we're familiar with a frequency, it's so easy to not indulge in other frequencies. When we don't know the frequency of God and freedom outside the bubble of unsafety, we don't know what that feels like. And then all we have is safety. And then we're trying to find God inside of this bubble, inside of this maze. We're trying to find fulfillment inside this maze. But the privilege we have here is to be open enough to those kinds of teachings where we can practice being outside the bubble. We can practice our natural true state. And by doing that more and more often, the allegiance and the reality of it just seems to disappear. We start to see Barbie dolls are not real. Santa Claus does not really exist. And then we don't have to think about it anymore. And our non-belief in Santa Claus is automatic. It's not a thing we hold. We don't have to maintain it. Similar with fearlessness. Once you just know 
the state of your true self, you're, you've spent enough time outside the frequency bubble of fear and unsafety. And then all these effects come naturally. And then you can still have desires and they'll just kind of manifest or they won't or they change or whatever. But that's not the allegiance. That's not the fear point anymore. Super clear. Love it. Wonderful. Yeah. So don't try to get out of unsafety. Just don't get into it. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Thank you.